All right, we're gonna be doing this vlog style today. So welcome back to Deep Dive Adventures. Today I will be going down to Plymouth, Utah to a annual underwater pumpkin carving competition. It's gonna be crazy because I've never even heard of anything like this until a few months ago. So I couldn't say no. And it's in a hot spring where the water is 85 degrees. It's gonna be great. The drive is almost exactly an hour away from me. So that's no different than me driving up to Ryrie. So let's get going. So I'm going to be doing a lot of the voiceover in this video because for the most part, it's hard to tell what's going on from all the silt that's been kicked up from other divers. Here I'm getting all of my gear finalized and ready for the dive. I have all of my gear ready to go, so I'm just chilling at the surface waiting for my instructor to come back up from teaching some of the other groups that were there that day, and as well as the pumpkin carving. Here are a few of the many pumpkins that were carved here today. The designs were very well planned out. Here I'm going through a underwater buoyancy challenge that is installed inside of the spring at about 20 feet of depth. Now I'm at a different part of the hot spring where a dock had actually sunk and so it had a few handrails installed making it easier for new divers to learn different skills. Here we are diving in what is commonly known as the pot. We had maybe 20 or 30 divers in this area previously and with all the silt being kicked up, it is almost impossible to see who's around you or even near you. Video cameras tend to pick up more light underwater than the human eye can. Here I couldn't even see my hands because of how thick the silt actually was. To give you an idea of how zero visibility can occur rapidly, I pick up some of the silt off of the floor and spread it throughout the water. One of the things that truly amazed me were these fish that were capable of withstanding the heat and high mineral content from the spring water. Here I found where the majority of the heated water is actually being forced up through the ground and into the spring itself. 
here I'm trying to use my dive computer to get a somewhat accurate measurement on how hot this water actually was, but it didn't pick anything up. But it was quite mesmerizing to watch the sand itself flow like water. I was curious to see how hot the vented water actually was, but I discovered I couldn't keep my hand in there for very long because of how hot it actually is. My guess, it would be around 150 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Here's some of the recorded information from my dive. I was underwater for a total of an hour and 36 minutes. The average water temperature was 92 degrees and my maximum depth was 28 feet. All right, I just got back from Belmont Hot Springs and I will do a quick gear review and I'll try not to make it boring because they can drag on for a little while. My side mount rig, I have the Hollis Katana 2. Now this is a complete setup from the get go. So you can just buy this and you're essentially ready to start side mount diving, but you do need a few other gear items. For my exposure suit, I have my CC Komoda 7 millimeter semi dry suit. Recently, I got these CC propulsion fins. These work a lot better in a side mount configuration because split fins are quite hard to push water around with. Mask, I have the Tusa Freedom Elite with the Idaho Dive Pirates headband as well as my Aqualung i330R diving computer. And for my regulator sets, I have the Apex XDX50, which is in a DIN configuration. So DIN is a lot more different than yoke. It's pretty hard to explain if I don't have the tanks, so I won't get into that, but I do have DIN to yoke adapters, as well as cam bands and different things for my tank setups. I will once again, go into depth about what this actually means in the next video, as well as my GoPro Hero 11, the official GoPro waterproof housing and a backpack strap mount. And with this setup, it allows me to attach the GoPro to my side mount harness and it's actually what you see me use when I'm swimming around. All right, stay tuned for next week's video because I'll be doing my first decompression class. And what that means is I will go down to 100 feet stay there past the no decompression limits and actually come back up to the surface. So stay tuned for that. We'll be going to 100 feet once again. I'll see you guys in the next video.